Chief Joseph of the Syrian Tap, right? Because we're gonna show you some history that we actually came from Assyria, right? The people that you know as Native Americans or Hispanics, right? We came from Assyria. This is history. But this is but this is some history that people like to look over, man. Right? Hey brother, you got five minutes of the Bible, man? You trying to hear the Bible real quick, brother? Sure. What's up, good brother? All praise to the most high. Have you heard that you're an Israelite, brother? Yeah. All praise to the most high. What you know? I know, I know the Bible and the Quran. Okay, you know the Bible and the You study both? Yeah. Okay, what, so what do you take away from both books? Okay, like, I I'm just going to say I believe in the Quran more. You know, I'm going to question, I believe in the Quran more. And why would you lean more towards the Quran? I feel like it's more straightforward. Okay. I feel like it's more real. Okay. That's what I want to story. About all the stories? Yeah, like, you know, the Bible got the story yeah. of every individual. Right. But the Quran is straight from God. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I feel like it's more straightforward. Okay. Like, you know, the Quran is straight from God. So, I okay. feel like. But, you know, the Quran literally, all the prophets that are in the Quran are literally here in the Bible as well. It's just stories of Israelites. Right. right? right. It's stories of our ancestors. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, that's why, like, I, and I, like, you know, I respect you. You know, you're my brother, right? But, so, for me, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go by what my pop, by, so my bad, what my ancestors wrote. Yeah, rather than a secondary source, right? Because this is a primary source, brother. You can say that the Quran, at best, is a secondary source. You know? So, the reason, this is the reason why I follow the Bible. So you said the Quran is more straightforward. Or what do you mean by that? I mean, like, you know how they say the Old Testament right. is more like, I'm going to stand on mine and the New Testament kind of like, oh, you get a chance. You know, like, I mean, like, it's more... The Quran is just either this or that. I mean, at the end of the day, it comes with understanding of the Bible, right? Because the Old and New Testament, the Old and New Testament is just, the, the only difference is our Messiah came into the picture. Uh, you know, uh, our Messiah came to the picture. And he didn't change nothing, right? Uh, in, in church, we were we were taught that when Christ came, when Jesus Christ, in the name of Yahweh Shai came, that he changed everything and that was all kumbaya and flowers and rainbows, right? That's what church taught us, right? I grew up in church. I taught my youth ministry, you know what I'm saying? And all that, we got to just kind of just like be like, okay, man, like I understand we trying to talk about love and whatnot, but this is not the true message of God. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, um, bring out uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 18. All right, come on. I had a precept about... Um Lord not changing. Okay, bring that up. Okay. Yep. Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today right. and forever. Okay, so the, the our Messiah has not changed. Okay. He hasn't changed, man. Right? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of Christian of uh, what Christianity teaches is that he did change because they say, oh, he was bad and evil and he was mean to the Israelites in the Old Testament but now he's super nice to them and, and is allowing other people in you know and whatnot nah. uh, right. right we just got to understand what's happening in the New Testament because now there's different people but it's the same people at the same time because we were just called by different names uh, let me read right. uh, yeah go ahead it says the Quran does not mention the Bible by name but it does confirm the original revelations of the Torah right Okay, and the Gospels. That's the New Testament. Okay? The Quran states that God revealed holy books to the prophets and the messengers, including Torah and Moses. Right, right. Literally what he said. That's what the Quran is doing. But like I said, it's a secondary source, brother, at best. Why not go to the primary? Bring, bring out that Deuteronomy 18 and 18 because there's something I want. Specifically. Uh, Deuteronomy 18 and verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Okay, so there's going to be a prophet that's going to become among our brethren. The pro I know Islam teaches that this is Muhammad. Yeah. Islam yeah. teaches that this is Muhammad, but keep reading. It right. said, wait, read it from the top again. Verse 18. Right. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Among their brethren. And where were we at this time, brother? <laughs> right. Where were we at? We were in. 
we were looking for the land of Israel. This time. So this is talking about Israelites. We're going to get greedy on who this is, though, specifically. Right? Like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Right. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Right. So, matter of fact, read verse. Yeah, read verse 18 and start acting. Come. And I will put my words in his mouth. Okay, so Moses is saying that the Most High is going to bring us a prophet. And he's going to put his word in, in the prophet's mouth, right? Right. Keep reading. It says that he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. There you go. All right? So, this is what we know to, to be the Messiah. Right? Because he spoke everything that Moses and the Most High God had said. Right? This is not Muhammad. Because what did he say right here? This is a prophet that's among our brethren. Right? That's your own name. Right? What do you mean that's today's day? It's a prophet of us. Right. Today. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. We walk like this, talk like this. Right. We like one of them. But we got to know who we are. Yeah, we got to know who we are. So, so would you agree? My bad, brother. No, you could. But would you agree? Because Islam teaches that this is talking about Muhammad. Do you think this is talking about Muhammad? I think it's talking about the spirit. It, this is a this is a uh, human being though being talked about though. Okay. Okay. And this is the Torah, brother. You know what I'm saying? You got it? Look at Acts chapter 3 and verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. There you go. And that's what we just read. Deuteronomy 18, 18. Come. Whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution right. of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Right. Right. So, you said the, the Quran is more straightforward. What do you find more straightforward with the Quran? Because it's like, uh, you still are cut off your hand. Okay. Versus the New Testament, you still repent, I give you a chance. You know, it's like that. I'm kind of stupid, so that no. kind of hit me harder. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't stupid, brother. You, you gotta you understand. understand. The, I, I'm no stupid. Yeah. You just gotta understand the scriptures, right? Bring up uh, Revelation 20, though. Because that's not, the New Testament doesn't change. Well, it's not a different message. It's the same message from the Old Testament. It's just the. It's just being spoken by in a new perspective, brother. God. Right? Paul's writings, right, um, and his epistles were hard to be understood as well. That's what um, the brother Peter said, right, about Paul's writings. So sometimes Paul can be hard to understand, but it's the same message, right? Paul was to be asked like unto a Pharisee, a person that knows the law. Paul. Paul. So he knows the Torah. He was teaching the Torah. Right? Paul wasn't teaching out in the New Testament because there was no such thing as a New Testament, right? But you have you noticed know, like they don't say the word Torah. They says the law. They said the law. I'm gonna say I'm gonna speak. Yeah. And, you know, and then the uh, Quran they say they actually use the word Torah. Well the Torah just means the law. Yeah, Torah means law. Torah means law. Ouch. 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 Yeah, you all good, brother? Ouch. Yeah, but bring out Revelation 20 because the New Testament is not our butterfly language. Uh, 20. The book of Revelation 20 and verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Right. And they were judged every man according to their works. Can you read it? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So we're judged by our works, it said right here. Uh, we're judged by our work. This is not like Christianity. This is what Christianity teaches. 
God loves you so that you can stay the way you are. No, we are judged by our words, brother. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because and you would say the Quran says the same thing, right? We are judged by our words. No, nah, I'm gonna say because the good deeds and you know. Well, I'm gonna say the Quran judge on you doing right. Right. If you do wrong, it's off with your head. Okay. And if you if you do the right things, you know, Allah will accept you back. But if you just continue to do bad, they say you know, but the Quran is we gonna send to hell. We gonna be in the pit of fire. Okay, so. Let me ask you this, man. Because doesn't Islam teach as long as you have just more good deeds, then you will make it to heaven? Um, I'm not sure. You're not sure? I'm not Muslim. Oh, oh, okay. You're not Muslim? But you just study both books? Yeah. Okay, I get it. Let me ask you something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in our book, when we judge a matter, we have to get witnesses. All right, so now the witnesses are, are, are um, wicked. They can put somebody to death who's innocent. So in Islam, you're saying if somebody does something, they can chop off their hand or bring judgment on them, right? But sometimes that judgment could be wrong. Now you can kill the innocent man. So when Christ comes to do with the people of grace and mercy, that doesn't mean that you get away with sin. And see, that's what religion is. God, he know the difference from right and wrong. Yeah, he does. He know. So he ain't gonna make no mistakes. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you are right. You are right. You are right. You know, and that's that's wisdom, right? Matter of fact, um, get um, Psalms chapter nineteen and seven, uh, and replace the word law with Torah because they're the same thing. Uh, right? We're gonna, we're gonna read this right now. Uh, uh, I'll praise the man. It's the book of Psalms nineteen and verse seven. The Torah of the Lord is perfect. The what? The Torah of the Lord is perfect. Right here it says the law, but it's the Torah the same thing. This book right here is perfect. The first five books of the Lord is perfect, right? The law, right? So that's what we're trying to say here, right? The old, the New Testament is not speaking against the law. It's not speaking against the Torah. People, Christianity, I'll say, just don't understand what Jesus is talking about or what Paul is talking about. That's all it is. That's all it is. Right? Because when people... I, you say you grew up in church, right? Not necessarily, but I, I don't say I, I'm spiritual. Okay. I believe in something. you spiritual? Yeah. Get that spiritual. Hey, man. Paul, Paul said, oh, hold on. Man. You gonna like this one. You gonna like this one. Right? Romans. Romans 7. Because, hey, man. This is spiritual, man. And this is in the New Testament too. Get that. Come. Romans 7 and verse 14. For we know that the Torah is spiritual. The what? The Torah is spiritual. But I am carnal, sold under sin. So you say you're spiritual, brother. Right? Don't, don't you think you need to come back? Come. Romans 7 and 14. For we know that the Torah is spiritual. Right? But I am carnal, soul under sin. Right, but Paul is saying, but I'm a man. God. And it's, sometimes it ain't easy like one, two, three. You know what I'm saying? Right. But right. this is perfect. God. Right. This will never fail us, brother. Right. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So let's get let's get a law for the brother. God. Let's get a law. Yeah. Let's get. You want to see why we wear these on our shirts? Yeah. Okay, sure. come. Uh, because it's not this is not just a fashion statement we don't wear these just to look cool you feel me get that oh matter of fact good dog can you get that for me bumpkin uh, shirt yeah. uh, no he's gonna get it no, he's gonna get it let me just look Book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. What? Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So this is a law right here, brother, right? So he says, I command you that you put fringes on the border of your garments. Why? Throughout their generations. Right. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders 
a ribbon of blue. Okay, yeah. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So this is, the reason why we wear this is so that we can remember the Torah. God. So that we can remember the law that he gave us. It's a, it's a sign. It's a sign, just like the moon, just like the sun. It's a sign for us to keep the law, to remember the Most High, right? 